This is CNN Breaking News. Uh, we're just learning that the President of the United States will go back to the Gulf uh, region next Monday and Tuesday. He'll be visiting uh, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida. As you know, he's already visited Louisiana. So the President wants to make sure he's on top of this situation, wants to be very visible in what he's doing. He's heading back to the Gulf early next week for two days. There's other breaking news we're following right now. Breaking news that could help us better understand how much oil is really spewing into the Gulf of Mexico right now. Experts have had to rely on some murky, grainy pictures of that gusher deep below the water. But now, after days and days of asking, we're just getting in some higher quality images of the leak site. Let's bring in CNN's Joe Johns. He's working this story for us. Uh, all right, Joe, tell our viewers what we, what we can now see. Right, well, Wolf, uh, these are the high-resolution pictures that a lot of people on Capitol Hill, including Senator Barbara Boxer of California, has been asking for. Uh, these were shot uh, June 3rd, 2010, as we're told, around 4.30 in the afternoon. Uh, it's quite remarkable compared with some of the other pictures uh, we've seen. Uh, we see particles inside um, this uh, gusher that's going up uh, toward the surface. We see uh, at some points there's an ROV moving around over here. A lot more detail. So why is that important? It's important because the scientists who are looking at this can determine better by the way the particles go up how fast this is moving and how much oil is actually flowing into the Gulf. Now, the question, of course, is, is there more video like this, and why wasn't it released sooner? Senator Boxer and Senator Bill Nelson of Florida put out a letter just a little while ago, which says, in part, BP must not hinder the investigation of this matter by making available only pre-selected data and or video for review, as we understand has generally been the case. If BP delays provision of these videos or only makes available samples of video, the ability of outside experts to provide truly independent information is undermined. With me right now is one of the authors of that letter, Senator uh, Bill Nelson of Florida. Senator, tell us, do you think BP is holding back on this, and if so, why? Remember, it was Senator Boxer and me that had to literally almost pull it out of them to get the uh, video released in the first place, and this was several several weeks ago. Now, Barbara has gotten them to come up with this. We've never seen this before. Do you think that they have captured most of the oil going into the Gulf? 50% that they say? When you see this, you know it's clearly not. So that's why Senator Boxer and I wrote this letter today and say, we want you to release all of the data so that we can get the scientists to look at it and determine how much is going in, and what we have to expect. If this thing isn't plugged until September, how much do we expect is going to be sloshing around in the Gulf of Mexico? Why don't you trust BP, and what would be their motivation for not releasing this information earlier, if you know? Well, of course, they get fined on a per-barrel basis. So what did they say? Originally, it was 1,000 barrels a day. Then they revised that to 5,000. Then they said 12,000, then it may be 25,000, and now Senator Boxer and I have reason to believe from some of the members of this technical committee, you look at that, let's get the scientists. Some people are saying that's as much as 100,000 barrels a day going into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, when I look at your letter here, it's pretty polite. It doesn't seem to be a congressional threat in there, but I guess the question would be, if BP doesn't comply with your request, what is the Congress prepared to do? Well, that certainly ought to be the president, and the president ought to take over. Uh, he can't take over BP trying to plug the well. They, unfortunately, the oil industry is the one that has that technology, and I bet you, Joe, that that changes for the future. But certainly uh, the administration ought to take over, uh, and they ought to make sure all these fishermen that are not getting paid, the hotel motel owners, the restaurant owners, Absolutely. the federal government ought to coordinate and command all of that. Now, I think we also have to make clear that this was after the cut, but before the cap went on top. So uh, there, presumably much less oil now is actually leaking into the Gulf. Well, let's let the scientists look at this in high definition and give us their estimate. 
let's let them go in with their specific instruments on on flow rate and and volume and and acceleration of that oil coming out and determine exactly how much since bp did at least provide this do you think that uh... sort of bodes well for future cooperation uh... i've come not to be an optimist on getting information out of bp uh, so let's see now, we have reached out to them today by email uh... folks in the uk as well as here in the united states uh, i so far wolf have not uh, gotten information back from bp or any statement regarding the release of this new high resolution it's video. amazing and we're going to show our viewers i know uh... and i want to thank uh, senator nelson as well we're going to show our viewers on the left was the spew before the cut and cap operation took place on the right look at that look at that flow that's afterwards uh... after the cut and cap operation took place those are the high resolution images we're seeing right now let's bring in an expert to take a closer look at this high resolution video to talk about the fears that the capping process may and we hope this isn't the case but may have actually made the spill much worse we're joined by professor stephen worley of purdue university uh... what do you think of professor when you look at the before and after much, Senator. well when i was uh... At home last Thursday, and I was watching the the cutting operation when the riser was finally removed. I had serious concerns about how much the flow had increased. Not, uh, I think it's very difficult from looking at the video to say it's increased by 20 percent or it's increased by 100 percent. Very difficult to say that. But what I can say is I have strong concerns in that I think the flow rate technical group really needs to take this under consideration. And in fact, that's what we're going to be doing this week is measuring that flow. You're a member of that flow rate technical group, right? That's correct. Now, there's another member, Professor Ira Leifer, who's from the University of California, Santa Barbara. We're going to be speaking with him later, but he startled me uh, earlier today when I was reading the New York Times, and he said this, the well pipe clearly is flexing way more than it did before. By way more, I don't mean 20%. I mean multiple factors, not 20,000 barrels a day or 25,000 barrels a day. It could be way more. You just heard Senator Nelson say it could be 100,000 barrels a day. Uh, does that make any sense to you? Yeah, well, what I would say is Ira Leifer, Professor Leifer, is an expert at looking at these sorts of flows. And when you've looked at them uh, as long as he has, you can identify that the turbulent structure is different for higher, you know, higher speed flows than it is for lower speed flows. I'm not such an expert. My expertise is in measuring flows. And when I saw the video of the, uh, the riser being cut, I had serious concerns. I couldn't quantify it in terms of uh, the way that Ira did, but I you know, definitely want to double check and make sure you know, what the flow is. And, and there were only 11 members from this outside group of experts that the federal government has put together, this so-called flow rate technical group. Your guys are going to convene again and come up with a new estimate of how much is actually spewing out right now in the aftermath of this cut. Uh, and cap uh, procedure? That's right. What the flow rate technical group is trying to quantify is the flow rate at all the important periods of this uh, ongoing accident. So the first thing that we looked at was the flow prior to the cut and cap operation. That's the flow rate prior to June 3rd. And the reason that we concentrated on that first is that's the, uh, that was the flow condition for the first 40 some days of this accident. Now subsequent to that, subsequent to the cutting of the riser, uh, then on that particular day, June 3rd and early June 4th, then the flow increased due to cutting off the riser. We're going to measure that. And you thought, and excuse me for interrupting, you thought yeah. it might increase by 20%, but now some well, are saying it could have increased by factors of 2, 3, 4, or 5. As far as I know, that number of 20% came from BP, and if you ask me to come up with a number, it, it wouldn't necessarily be 20%. I don't know what it would be, but it would not be 20%. So, the, so your group did not come up with that 20% estimate because we've heard it from, from government officials uh, and, and we've heard it from BP executives. I guess what I, I think that the source for that quote is originally BP's and then it was echoed by various government officials. So we shouldn't believe in that. Is that what you're saying? Well, I guess if you ask me to come up with a number, if you ask me what the number was, I wouldn't say 20%. I would have to think about it and do some measurements of pressure in the BOP, in the blowout preventer, to figure out what that number would be. And BP hasn't released uh, how they came to this number of 20%. All right, we're going to have you, uh, if you don't mind, maybe come back with us uh, tomorrow and we can continue this conversation when you have a chance to take a look 
more closely at these new high-resolution images coming out. We'd appreciate that, uh, Professor, if that's sure. okay with you. Sure, I'd be happy to. All right, great. This is very worrisome, and we're going to speak later with uh, Professor Leifer of the University of California, Santa Barbara, who startled all of us today by saying uh, this is a potentially bigger disaster now in the aftermath of this procedure four days ago, this cut and cap procedure, than it was before. Uh, this is scary stuff. Uh, we're watching it very, very closely. Uh, much more coming up here in the Situation Room. Also.